Hi, this is Dr. Mike, host of the free iTunes podcast, Psychiatric Secrets Revealed with Dr. Mike, but that's not why I'm here today. This is another Saving Savvy episode, this time talking about the mid-range photo editor, Photoshop Elements 7, the latest in a long line of great photo editors. This is a compliment to my last video, which was on three other mid-range editors, specifically Paint Shop Pro, Photo Impact, and Photo Plus. All those were very good editors too. So let's take a look at this one and see if it's worth the money. The editor has three main parts. When you log in, it's going to want you to log into its new Photoshop.com site, which is both a free and paid site where you can upload your photos and you can display them to others and uh, if you want to go for the extra option get free tutorials and other things like that. Um, but the main programs are really two and that's the one that we're looking at right now the organizer and then the actual photo editor. The organizer is a very sophisticated piece of work. Um, it was sophisticated when it came out in earlier versions and they have just continued to upgrade it and to make it just a little bit uh, better each time. One of the things you'll notice is that the images are nice and clear and easy to see. You can also boost them up quite a bit or shrink them down. It's very easy to tag these pictures in many different ways. You can tag them by a star rating very easily if you choose to. You can tag them easily with a keyword. So for instance, if this was a place, which it is, I can just drag it down to places. And now that is tagged as a place. If I search for place, you're going to see that it's going to come up right there um, and it's tagged in that way. In fact, it even uses Boolean logic. So I could say, for instance, I want all of the pictures of places, um, but not those including Washington, D.C., for instance, and it would actually select for things like that. The organizer itself has some limited photo editing properties. We'll talk about those in a minute, but it also has the ability to go into other areas. So for instance, if I wanted to email some photos, or if I wanted to print some photos, or even order some some prints online, I could do that through the share option. This tab called create allows you to create some projects like a photo calendar, for instance, or a slideshow. Some of these are internally done. Um, so for instance, a slideshow is created in the software itself. Others are sent off to a commercial website like the photo calendar. And for $19.95 or so, you can get a beautiful calendar that you can give away as a Christmas gift. Uh, the real heart and soul, however, is fixing photos because it's not just a matter of organizing them. We want to fix them. And the editor itself he has some limited editing properties in it. These auto functions here like auto color, auto sharpen, auto red eye fix. Very limited, but that you might find them useful. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the other big program beyond the organizer, and that's the actual editor. There's really three different options that you can use in the editor. There is a quick fix, a guided edit, and a full edit. So if we select a picture, or let's say we select several pictures, what we're going to see is if we open them up in quick fix, they're all going to open, and then we can access them down here in Quick Fix, you have very basic functionality. Uh, the ability to kind of move a few sliders and, for instance, adjust the lightness of a picture, um, to adjust the saturation. I'm going to pull the saturation way down, or we can make it way saturated, or too, maybe too saturated. And some little extras, like the ability to whiten teeth, or make a sky bluer, or to get rid of red eye. But very basic, certainly something that's not worth the cost of the program because these particular options are available in even the most simple photo editor, probably the editor that came with your camera or scanner. There's also something called guided edit, which is kind of an educational portion of this particular um, software. It's also going to teach you about basic mid-level photo editing functions like the um, level control. And it's going to show you what a histogram is and what the importance of that is. And you can even launch an adjustment layer. Um, and then once you've learned everything, you can make that adjustment. So for this picture, sort of if I wanted to make it a little bit brighter, I can do that on the histogram and 
maybe change it a little bit that way too if I chose to do that. So it's going to explain that in a lot more detail than I'm going to do here. So the guided edit is going to give you a lot of learning tools and in fact it's going to give you some access to things that you can't get into the regular full edit like the scene cleaner. So here we have the full edit and this is really the heart and soul of the editor and this is going to look very similar to any other mid-range editor that you have out there and it's also going to look a lot like Photoshop. Each of these editors is somewhat different. The way that they handle their controls is somewhat different, but at least this is the general feeling in all of the editors. And of course you have the drop down menus on the top. This is going to control many things like auto uh, smart fix, auto levels. These are all your auto controls, kind of automatic, but also a lot of things like here again, here's that level control that we saw in the guided edit along this left hand side you have your basic tools and there are many many tools too many to talk about but just great selection tools great cloning tools great ways to desaturate an image or to add something like sharpness to a particular part of an image these are kind of standard tools the one I'd like to highlight is this kind of double tool here there's two there's the spot healing brush and the healing brush and what that does is it really is a cloning tool that combines elements of both where you're taking the clone from and where you're placing it so you have a much more seamless patch. On the right side you have your layers which um, is a really cool thing in mid-range editors. Everything is kind of stacked in layers. And then you also have another panel up here which will change depending on the functions that you are using at the time. So for instance, we have some effects here. If I wanted to take some effect like this, oh, I don't know, let's take this fresco effect for whatever reason. Just drag it on there. It's going to let you know what it looks like if I say OK you get this very different sort of look. And I can kind of show you if I undo Fresco, it kind of goes back to that image. The bottom line with this editor is that it's extremely competent. A lot of effort he has gone in to make it as simple to use as possible. Now you can't make this super simple because it's a sophisticated tool, but by adding tutorials and levels of complexity by quick or guided or full edits, you really can kind of ease your way into the editor. And that's a great feature. How does Photoshop Elements compare to the other mid-range editors? Well, I'd say if this was a race, they would all be pretty neck-to-neck. -neck. They're all very sophisticated, very competent, very mature programs. I would say, however, that Photoshop Elements, when you look at pure functions and pure different tools, would probably be at the end of this neck-to-neck -neck race with a program like PaintShop Pro um, being at the head and and uh, photo impact and photo plus being in the middle. Now that's not to say that you can't do something in one program and not in the other. You just have to change your strategy, use different tools. It might take you a little bit longer and certainly Photoshop Elements includes a lot of very very sophisticated tools um, that really aren't reproduced in those other programs too. So, so they're all pretty comparable, very slight variations. If you had Photoshop, I think the only reason you need to get to one of the other programs if it offered a very specific tool or option, for instance, CMYK Color Space, which is offered in PaintShop Pro, or the ability to do great graphics um, and things like great lower thirds or web graphics, which you see in Photo Impact. The huge advantage to Photoshop Elements really is in its popularity because it's the number one photo editing software out there, and because it has the Photoshop name, you'll find lots of professional books and video tutorials and DVDs and all sorts of other things explaining how to operate various functions on this program. So I'd say if you are looking for a mid-range editor, consider any of these four. You can't go wrong. I certainly like Photoshop Elements. I like the other ones too. Good luck and happy editing. And please don't forget to give my podcast a listen. Learn a lot about psychiatry and mental health. It's um, anonymous, it's free, and you can get it on iTunes. Take care.